Well, greetings. Welcome to my messy desk or workbench. Um, today I want to talk about a project that I have for a friend. Obviously, this is a wood turning lathe tool rest, and it's a nice curved one that uh, is made for a Powermatic lathe. This is made, in fact, for a 20 inch lathe. And uh, he wants to be able to use it on his Laguna which is an 18 inch lathe. The issue is that uh, the tool post won't go far enough down. When he puts it in his uh, banjo, it's uh, above the center. So he asked me if there's some way I could perhaps turn this or get this diameter down. So effectively I come up to about here and uh, then he could get it down low enough to use on his 18 inch lathe. Now, I have a metal lathe, but I don't have enough swing to accommodate this. And I fished around for ideas, and what I've come up with is something I'm going to attempt. And I say attempt because that's exactly what it is. Uh, I've never done anything like this before, but what I'm going to try to do is I do have a three jaw metal lathe chuck for that I've made an adapter for and I could put it on my wood turning lathe which is a Powermatic and that will hold this end and if you look here you'll see that apparently as part of their production process they have a location to put a probably a life center in there when I tried to put my life center in there there's not enough room for the point to engage before hitting the outer surface here. So I'm going to get some of the, one of my tools that I make for wood turning, a small one, which is a 4140 chrome molly. And I'm going to turn it on my metal lathe so that I have a longer extension to a point. And then I can hold the other end in a chuck uh, that I put in my tailstock on my lathe. That will, of course, then support this end. I'll grab it here, and I'll spin it this way on my wood turning lathe. Then, of course, how to cut this? Well, the wood turning tools that I make is like this. This is uh, the body, and this is the bit. This bit is M2 5% cobalt tool steel. And it's ground just like I would if I were to use it on my metal lathe. So this will cut metal. I know that because I've turned brass and uh, I've turned copper and aluminum on my wood lathe with this tool. And I'm going to try it on cast iron. So that's where I say this is an experiment. The first step is I'm going to get one of my small tools and... Uh, Cut it down, cut a piece small enough and put it on my metal lathe and turn it so that I have my dead center, which is what I'll end up with. Not a live center because it won't rotate. It'll be a dead center, but that'll probably be fine for what our purposes are. And uh, we'll get to that next. So let me show you that process and we'll move along.
I think that'll work. So we're going to go try it. Well, it does work very nicely. It just about fits. There's just clearance <clears throat> for the chuck. And the uh, point is uh, engaged nicely into the pocket in the tool rest. Now, if I pull back, you can see the action that's going to take place when I go to turn this. And uh, to say this is not OSHA approved would be a comical joke. So, thinking this through, we're going to make some alterations to this setup, which we're going to go through ne next. There's going to be two things I'm going to do. For one thing, the far end here is much heavier than this end here. That is to say that the center of mass of this end from the center out here is uh, closer, and it may in fact be lighter, but the rotating mass is going to put this out of balance. So I'm going to come up with a means of putting some weight out here to try to balance it better. And then I'm going to make a disc to mount through a hole here and be attached to this so that then, since I'm working on the far side, I won't be in as much danger of this uh, rotating guillotine here. So let's go through those processes next. Well, as you can see, I've been busy. Uh, this thing, I think, is about ready to turn. Let me run through what I've done. You can see here that I've got a large nut here. This is probably from a trailer hitch ball. And it seemed to balance this out reasonably well. And uh, then I've made this disc, which is going to protect my hands from the swinging bars of this tool rest and attach them with uh, heavy-duty tie wraps there. Here's the other side. So that line is about what I want to uh, turn this diameter up to. So I want to just carry this forward, or up if you will, towards that line. Uh, the tool rest, I have a nice short one that was uh, handmade a while ago. And down here, you can see I had to use a bolt instead of the conventional handle, which stuck out too much. This plate has a bit of wobble to it. And that's largely driven by the uh, hose clamp that I have holding that nut in place. Because we certainly don't want that flying off. So, uh, with any luck, this will work out properly. And I'll be able to complete this job of uh, tearing this diameter uh, up to here. So let's uh, get to it. So here's how I hope it to go. I'm going to use my uh, tool here and when I fire this up you'll see it uh, tries to wobble until it gets up to speed. This tool rest down a little bit. Certainly at times like this you want to make sure everything is just right uh, before you ever start. So let's uh, reposition this a little better. If this will work. So I still got threads. Let's try this again. Well, I'm going to have to work at it. 
Well, at this point, I'm going to break in with a voiceover because the audio on the video at this port is just terrible. Um, the uh, sound of the lathe and the cutting action of the tool as I attempt to make it work was uh, a bit much. And I wanted to tell you what you're actually watching here. If you look at the action of the tool, it's being pushed away with that interrupted cut. That's this part is obviously not perfectly round. So the casting, every time it whips around to where it's sticking out, pushes the tool away. And on a metal lay, that's not an issue because the tool post and holder is so much stronger than a person. But here you see where I'm coming in on the side. This changed everything, actually. It allowed me to actually make the tool bite. And since it was continuously cutting, it didn't push me away, even though the side cut would vary with the casting. But as I worked it down in these small little increments, this actually worked. So I could work it down to near the diameter in one portion and then start working on the next uh, little iteration of uh, length. And I uh, kept going with this throughout most of the process, no matter what I did. Uh, another factor is that instead of the tool cutting all the time, because I was holding it, it would push away and rub and that would dull it. So I had to take breaks and sharpen. So I think about this point, I'll go back to the audio on the video and let you uh, get description from that. Obviously it was going slow, but I think this is the process this interrupted cut is very difficult to manage with a handheld tool, but if I uh, leverage the already round part and go sideways, I seem to be able to handle it better. So I think that's the process I'm going to move forward with. And uh, but otherwise, I think this might uh, this just might give me what I want. Try some cutting oil and see if that makes a difference. I don't think the color oil makes much of a difference. But I think I might regrind my bit. I think I'm just going to keep going with this process and uh, I'll get back with you as it progresses toward the end. Well, obviously I've been busy since the last time we talked. And I'm pretty much done. I now have to uh, get the diameter where I want it. I've been uh, using a slightly different grind on the bit. And uh, let's show you how this is working. Clearly, it's 
not as wonderful as a metal lathe would be, but it is getting the job done. I'm going to check uh, dimensions here pretty soon. Uh, in fact, I could probably do that right now. So what I want is uh, this dimension here, which should be just about one inch. Uh, 0.992, and I'm pretty sure this is a little bit big. 1.04. So, yeah, I got to take uh, 40 thousandths off. And uh, part of that, what I can do is uh, turn it on and slow it down here and just use this big hefty file. And this will uh, kind of mandate that I get it flat and continuous and uh, work it down with this. And I think that's going to probably be my process to uh, bring this into what I want. One point uh, oh three two. So let me uh, proceed with that, and I'll show you the final result. Well, I've finished it up. The uh, tool post has been machined. You can see here. Uh, I've got it mic'd to the same dimension as the rest of it, so it certainly should uh, fit on the lathe when it's put in place. And uh, that completes this project. So uh, hopefully, uh, if you have something like this in the future, I've shown you at least one approach. I would advise you, though, if you don't have experience doing things like this, as I pointed out earlier, you can get pretty severely injured if you uh, put something like this in a lathe and start spinning it and don't have some means of keeping your arm out of harm's way from this uh, swinging uh, hunk of cast iron. But it worked out uh, well enough to put this into service on an 18-inch lathe. Hope you uh, enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.